folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Just want to start that with a little mood music, mood music here. Uh, <clears throat> the purpose of this video is going to be to uh, demonstrate how to calculate electric fields for a one-dimensional charge distribution. So what we're looking at here, right, this red line is going to represent our charge distribution. So again, you know, so imagine a bunch of pluses all in a row, and this basically means equivalent. I'm drawing that as a, uh, just this red line here. So this is all positive charge distribution. Uh, it has a total length L and a total charge Q spread out uniformly along this length. Uh, what we're going to do here is talk about how to calculate the electric field at this point that I labeled P, a distance A away from one end. All right, so electric field calculations. Um, I'm going to start with this. We know that the electric field due to a point charge is KQ over R squared. But again, it's important to realize that's for a point charge only. So the idea is, can we break this problem up, our charge distribution, into a bunch of point charges uh, where we can apply this formula? Now, another thing to consider, electric field, remember, these are vector quantities. So before I do anything else, I'm going to put a coordinate system in this problem. I'm going to put it in blue. And we can put a coordinate system anywhere we want. Uh, the midpoint would be a decent location. Right at P might be a decent location. I'm going to go ahead and just put my coordinate system right here, right on the left side. And again, this is just choice. So in this problem, this is going to be the x direction. This is going to be the y direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to imagine taking this charge distribution and breaking it up into pieces. And I'm going to consider just one piece here. And I'm going to consider a very small piece that has a length uh, that I'll call dx. Now this piece, uh, we need to, we're going to need to know how much charge is on that piece. That would be a dq because if this is infinitely small, it also has an infinitely small charge on it. And I can get the charge from the charge density. If I take the total charge and divide by the total length, I now have a number with units of coulombs per meter. And if I multiply by the length of my charge, I would have the charge on that chunk. So I now have an expression that will tell me the charge on, on this chunk. And this expression is good anywhere along here, as long as this uh, charge is uniformly distributed. All right, next, I'm going to go ahead and draw the electric field vector at P due to this chunk. That would be to the right. Now, you know, in a lot of my examples, I tend to use positive charge distributions. Right here is where the problem would differ slightly. If this were a bunch of negative charge along here, this field right here would point to the left. Other than that, there's no difference in uh, how these problems are worked. So that's what we typically use the plus and minuses for, is the electric field directions. Now you notice I labeled it DE instead of E. Well, that's because if the chunk I'm considering here is infinitely small, the field it produces at this point also infinitely small. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my formula for a point charge. This field is going to equal K times the charge of my point charge, which is equal to Q over L dx. So that quantity is my Q, right, over. Now the R needs to be from the chunk or from the charge to the point. So in this example, let's see, we'll do it up here. This distance right there is R. Now, you know, I've got a bunch of distances here. From here to here is L. From here to here is A. From the origin to here is what we would typically call X. The distance I need R is the total distance uh, here. Whoops, I'm sorry. From here to here minus X. So this bottom is going to equal L plus A minus X. And that's being squared. And again, L plus A is the distance from here to here. If I subtract x, that's this distance, that gives me r, the distance I need. So we've got that the, I'm just going to recopy this over to the right, or down below here, de is equal to k. And I'm going to go ahead and put the q over l grouped together, because these are all constants. 
And then I'll write dx over L plus A minus X squared. That electric field vector points to the right. Now this is a one-dimensional problem. Everything, all electric fields are going to point to the right in this problem as this chunk moves from left to right. I'll, I'll go ahead and put a direction on it last. So the total electric field, we're going to have to add these all up or sum them up. And in the language of calculus, that's what the integral does. So we're going to have integral. Now this stuff's all constant, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that out in front. Now the integral is over x. Right? So this chunk can be as far as here, where x would equal 0. And we got to picture this chunk moving from left to right to that point where x is equal to l. So this integral is going to run 0 to l. Then we got dx over l plus a minus x squared. Right now. I'm sure that you know a lot of folks watching this video, you can probably integrate this in your head. I'm going to go ahead and do a substitution on this to make the integral a little bit um, easier to follow. And um, at this point in my courses, I like to demonstrate how I do these substitutions anyway. So what I'm going to do is this. I am going to make the following substitution. I'm going to let u equal the L plus A minus X. Now when you do a substitution, my advice is, is change everything over. I don't like to see integrals get like halfway subbed and then go back to the originals. What I do is, if I'm going to make a substitution, I always think of Yoda, uh, do or do not, but I don't go in the middle. So if U is equal to this expression, du would equal minus dx because this is constant, this is constant, and du dx would be minus 1. I'm going to also change the limits. If x is equal to 0, then u, and I'm looking right here, is equal to l plus a. And if x is equal to l, that's my top limit, and I'm putting an l right here now, then u is equal to just a. So our electric field can therefore be identically written as, whoops, let me bring those constants out in front, kq over l integral, and my new integral is now going to run from L plus A to A, dx I can get from here, dx is equal to minus du over u squared equals, all right, kq over L. Now, just hold, hold off on this minus sign for a moment. The integral of du over u squared, let's see, is, um, let's see, add 1 divided by the new power. So that's u to the minus 1 over minus 1. The minus, the over minus 1 part in this, these are going to cancel. We're just going to be left with 1 over u from L plus a to a. And now we're going to put in our top limit. And I think what I'll do here is just write this. KQ over L times the quantity. 1 over A minus 1 over L plus A. Putting in the bottom limit. Now, uh, I know that this electric field is uh, to the right. I've defined right as positive uh, as, a, as a result of that. That's why we've got a positive sign here. Notice that we know that L plus A is bigger than A. So L so 1 over a is bigger than 1 over l plus a so this thing does in fact come out positive i'm going to go ahead now and turn this into a vector by uh, giving it a direction so i'm going to say the electric field vector is kq over l times the quantity 1 over a minus 1 over l plus a in the plus i direction as I have defined it. Now if you want you could combine these into like terms, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is to keep the video a little shorter. Now one of the things I get asked a lot, you know, how do we know when we're right? Well there's you know there's no big book of answers in life but you know always check and make sure that you're dimensionally consistent. Any electric field that you calculate all right, has to have units of kq over r squared or kq over distance squared. So you'll notice each of these products has the right dimensions, kq over distance squared. Another check. If A is infinitely large, the field should go to zero. And you'll find, by the way, that it does. If you go through and you put uh, infinity in for A, you'll find this thing goes to zero. I like to check at kind of a mid-region. So it's not really a limit part, but if A is large, meaning if A is a lot bigger than L, 
then the electric field should be approximately equal to kq over a squared. That would be the third check we would do on that. And physically what that means is if this point is over to the right far enough that a is quite a bit larger than l, then this is approximately a point charge, or can, this problem can be approximated as a point charge problem, which means this expression right here should end up being approximately equal to kq over a squared. I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the reader. If you combine these and then you make the approximation that a is quite a bit larger than l, uh, I think you'll find that that this expression will converge to this, meaning that if we're a log, if a is uh, quite a bit larger than l, it's approximately a point charge, and uh, all of those things point in the right direction, meaning that it's dimensionally consistent. Now it doesn't prove it's right, but if you got something that was not dimensionally consistent, that would prove it's wrong. It's approximately a point charge equation for large values of A. Now, I did not prove that in this video again, but it's not real hard to do. Just combine these terms and when you and use the approximation that A is a lot larger than L. Basically, you'll lop off the L uh, somewhere in there, and it'll approximate to this. And the electric field goes to zero as A goes to infinity. None of those things uh, put together prove you're right. In fact, all of them even put together doesn't, do not prove you're right, but it's uh, strong evidence uh, to support so. So anyway, I hope this video uh, helps demonstrate how to calculate the electric field due to a linear charge uh, distribution. Again, this is a one-dimensional example. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some two examples or two-dimensional examples next. Have a great day.